Hello. All right, first of all, Noah, I did what Joel said. When you see a young person stepping up from Gen Z, hallelujah, right? I know a lot of friends that have gone and sent their kids to college over the last several years, and when they come back after the first or second semester, they wonder who that kid was. They've changed their mind. It's not only happening in college, it's happening in high school, it's happening all the way at the elementary level. So I, I know in uh, one school, uh, the elementary kids had to reach into a jar and pull out one of the amendments and write a little paragraph on it. And the one little boy excited that he's gonna be hunting in the next couple of years wanted that second amendment. And we all know it's not just about hunting. But anyway, when he went to the teacher and says, who has it? Because he wanted to trade. You know what they said? Oh, honey, we don't allow that in the school. Are you kidding me? So we got to fight. And we need people with Gen Z to step up as well. Because when I look around this room, it's very every other room I get up and talk in front of. We know what the fight is. Okay? And they are very patient people. They know that what's in our hearts isn't in the hearts of a lot of these young people today. Whether it's a flag falling onto the ground and you dive, they'd say, get it or whatever. But anyway, thank you, no, very much. <laughs> All right. I had Bruce, uh, our membership secretary, send this to Joel. It's missing one thing. We have a big gold cross right here. This must have been one of the first slides, but you can see it on the book. Okay, We the People was founded a couple years ago. The idea was Tony Rich. If anybody knows Tony Rich, Tony was a great friend of mine, a mentor like a dad to me. We did a lot of stuff together from you know the 80s and on, but Tony's been active since the 70s. And uh, you know, one thing Tony said, he said, hey, I want to get this group together. And we got, a bunch of us got and figured out what our name was going to be. And then we wrote a set of bylaws, and then we wrote what I'm going to talk about here in a second. But um, one of the biggest things that went into our name was we the people. If you look at the document, the first three words, we the people, are probably five times larger than any other lettering in that document. And why? Because the framers of that document wanted to send a message that we the people meaning the citizens are in charge of the government. The government is not in charge of us. That's why they're there, okay? Plus they wanted to send a little message like Jan, uh, John Hancock, when he signed it, he signed it real big, why? He wanted to make sure the king saw it, okay? So that's why we the people is in there, just to let you know, we are in charge of the government. The government is not in charge of us. Thomas Jefferson said, Every 20 years, the government should be overthrown. Well, that was 240 some years ago, right? I, it hasn't been done since, but yeah. But anyway, um, the other of America, that was put in there, not only because of the citizens, but one thing Tony always used to say, before you were a Democrat, an independent, a Republican, what were you? Everybody was born an American in this country. And that's the most important. And I hear people today tell me like, oh, that document's 240 some years old, it needs change. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Those people that wrote, wrote that, I don't know whether they were Nostradamus or what, but they had a crystal ball to see what's happening today in this country. Okay, so I applaud them as well. And that's one thing we have to stand up about. And you'll hear about our group. First thing we went after was who? The Second Amendment people, because we all had ties. I'm president of Rochester Sportsman. I've been president of uh, We the People of uh, that meets at Rochester, Beaver County Sportsman's Conservation League Youth Foundation. I've been president of that for years. So our biggest ties were to go after the sportsman groups, to get membership, because face it, when you look at a group like this, hallelujah, thank you, everybody. And Joel sent me a lot of other like groups. And on uh, this month, on the 27th, we're meeting up at Ben Franklin Tap Room up on 422, and there's gonna be several groups there, but we the people of America are gonna get to present, uh, and we're gonna talk about the history and what was behind the Second Amendment. We're gonna talk about we the people a little bit, 
but also uh, FOEC, we invited them to talk about what's happening with the Second Amendment as well. So if you can make it, Ben Franklin Tap Room on 422, six o'clock on the 27th. Believe me, last time I was there, they had 150 people in a room. And there'll be people from Mercer, like light groups like yours, like light groups of mine. There'll be people from Butler, Beaver County and Lawrence County. Lawrence County Patriots are the ones that put that on. Yeah. Very organized group. Ginny's great. I, I worked with her and it's not far. It's like a nice drive. It's like what, about a half hour, I think, from here. Yeah. yeah. So Lawrence yeah. County is, I, I found out that Lawrence County used to be Beaver County. Yeah. Beaver County went up into Lawrence County and then they like separate. Separated off. You know, but I didn't know that. So Beaver County, that's part of Beaver County initially. So. Great place, I've been there, it's awesome. They play Newsmax on the TVs at the bar. Yeah. They're a good group, for yeah. sure. Yeah, they never shut down during COVID. Anything they kept open, that's a very supportive uh, restaurant bar to us. We get the back room, when you come in, walk straight through the front door, right into the back. So, try to be there. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But also on here, you see the cross, and the reason the cross was put on there is because when that document, when they were ratifying what was going to go into the Constitution, Ben Franklin, which wasn't a Christian, but he knew during that revolution that he prayed to a God for the safety of all the men and to make sure this revolution came about and, was, and we were victorious. So what he did is when all the colonies met and they said, hey, he said, I think we should add God in there. And only two said, yeah, I agree. Well, then Frank Franklin, after a couple meetings, kept coming back and he goes, hey, have we forgotten what that has done for us over that revolution, who we all prayed to, what we did? And then eventually it was put in there. And uh, so that's why the cross is so important on here to us because you might be able to overthrow man, but you're never going to overthrow uh, God, okay? so. Anyway, what we first did, like I said, we went after the sportsman's clubs where we had a voice, we felt, to get our membership up, all right? Now, we had people join and everything like that, and it's a great group, but we went after the Beaver County Sportsman's Conservation, we went after Midland, we went after Armstrong Conservation League, where they are over all the sportsman's clubs, and we convinced them to join us. So on paper right now, and that's the only thing that's ever gonna get attention, okay, is those number of votes. Right now we're about 24,000 membership strong. And it's through the clubs that have believed in us, let us get up and talk, and we got their, we got their endorsement. So, and, and if I have to leave here with one big message is, this is a great group. We the People is a great group. Lawrence County Patriots, great group. All the groups are great. And you have your own identity, you have your own name, and that's hallelujah again for that. But what, what it's gonna take is, when we have a rally, when we have polls, when we have uh, different things that we have to go after, we have to unite under one umbrella. We don't wanna change your group. We don't wanna change our group. Everybody has a great, way they're gonna go. But someday we're all gonna have to unite as modern day patriots in this world, okay? Because that's what gets attention. It isn't when you say, hey, I have 100 in my group or I might have 40 in my meeting. What, what gets votes, uh, get changes votes and ideas in uh, the Capitol are how many voters they have. And when they hear that we collectively in Beaver, Butler, Lawrence, uh, Mercer County, now we have 150, 200,000 votes. Now you start to change things. And today it's, again, Beaver County, 27th, maybe we won't gain some more. But we, we have a heck of a lot, 67 counties in this state. We have to get, and I'm sure every one of them have a like group like ours. So we have to get out there, recruit, and make sure that A, we're attacking the polls, you know, when somebody here said something about uh, school boards and things like that. You know, hey, guilty. I became, I was complacent for years. I let them. I let the school boards change their curriculums and let them do things. Why? Because 
you know, maybe I didn't have a school kid in a school at the time. But the bottom line is, you know, we when I went to school, what we have businessmen, doctors, lawyers, everybody that was running that business. But that's a business. That's a big business. Now, what do we have? A lot of times we just have moms that are soccer moms that are mad or dads that are mad to jump on the school board because they want to change something or maybe put a uniform on their kid that didn't make a team. That isn't how those schools run. They shouldn't be like that. But the trouble with it is, and we talked about the other night in a meeting, a lot of these people, doctors, lawyers, businessmen, they don't want to step up anymore because social media can kill them. You start one bad rumor mill out there and what happens? Could kill your business. Could kill your, you know, and you know, we, mostly all the business out there is word of mouth. You want good things, you don't want bad. But anyway, a couple things that we did. We wrote this book, okay? Political elected official legislative employee handbook. No different than in my company. I belong to a Fortune 500 company. Every January, they email me the book, whether it's a subtle change or no change. And they say, read it and sign it. Well, better sign it. Because if you don't, something's going to happen, right? So anyway, every one of these books are going out to any member uh, elected official. It's going to go to them. And it has a page in there that we ask them to return it, sign it, and return it. Now, what's somebody going to do? They're going to look at it. Some of them, they're going to look at it. What are they going to do? Throw it in the garbage, right? But we're going to know how many letters we get back. Okay? And again, no different than what I signed. You know, attendance, drug, alcohol abuse, things like that. I mean, the way your code of conduct, you put your hand on the Bible and you swear, right? You're going to uphold the Constitution of the United States or the Constitution of Pennsylvania. They don't do it, guess what? We have your signature or we don't have it. That's you know, we're gonna come after you. But is we the people of America, small group, gonna be able to attack all this? No, but we want them to know that we, the people, all of us, are watching them. And you better start adhering to what we have in those constitutions, if not. We're going to come knock on your door and we're going to find out why you don't. Now, is that a big task? Absolutely. All right. So, the other thing we're going to organize again, because we have strong, we want to protect the Constitution every bit of it. But since we have big ties to the Second Amendment, next year uh, we're going to organize a bus and we're going to pay for it for We the People. And then Rochester Sportsmen, we've always sent a bus for several years, paid for it ourselves. And we're, so we're gonna try to get two buses. And when that date comes about, I'll get it to Joel. And if somebody's interested, it's a free bus ride and we're going to Harrisburg. And it's called Second Amendment Action Day. And Craig uh, from FOEC might talk a little bit about that. But the date has not been set, but it's guaranteed we go every year and we need to get on that rotundo or out on those steps, depending on where they hold it, and at least fight for that. And it, while you're in there, there's going to be, you'll be able to address some other, because everybody gets a section of offices that they get to go to, and you'll see right on there whether those people vote in favor of you or vote in favor of uh, the other side. All right? So, but we meet at Rochester Sportsman. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get you a list of the dates. Anybody interested to come up, that's great. But please, on the 27th, if you want to get involved and try to get a bigger umbrella group, again, we're not here to try to change anybody, pull anybody away from this group. Trust me when I tell you that. We're here to get more power and a bigger umbrella. And that's the only way things are going to get changed is by votes. All right. So that's, that's awesome. Awesome. That's all yeah. I have. It's so funny how Jerry sounds so much like Paul Simmons and Team Red. We don't want to change you. We don't want to rebrand you or whatever. Again, it's that networking. Paul, Team Red, Jerry. I just met him. This is great. Like it's music to my ears. 
this is what this is what I've been all about, like trying to get greater reach, greater penetration in the other counties as well, using social media to try to spread the word. This is awesome. Jerry, this is great. I love what I hear. Yeah. I was gonna jokingly say while you're in the bus going to Harrisburg, you might want to go over to New Mexico and, and stand out at the governor's office there. Yeah, I, I hear recent you. events. You know what there. I, I have a buddy who lives in a border town. I hunt down here every year in Texas in a border town. And uh, he sends me pictures weekly of buses leaving. And he says, another one heading your way. And I heard somebody else saying, they're coming, they want this to be a sanctuary city in Pittsburgh, they're already here. My wife is at Ambridge School District, my daughter's in Central Valley. They have kids in their classrooms right now, I can't speak one word of English. People say, oh, it's the cracker plant. It's not the cracker plant. That's an excuse right now. But the bottom line is, they are here and they're still coming. All right, and we talk about filling out that voter registration everything they're going to find every way they can to get let allow them to vote like they do in other states so the fight is on and we're <laughs> you know thank you for being the fighters because uh we need every everybody and if we're at that what 5 12 5 16 number if everyone in this room went out and turned two more over we'd be a heck of a lot closer wouldn't we exactly so anyway but now that's that's all I have right now. I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak. Uh, again, I applaud everybody in here because without you, uh, it, it would be a shame. So we need a lot, a lot more young people, like you said, like Noah.